Tia Sun Sagawa is Kamu Kamu. Um, I come from the, the eastern side of the country, Wangan. Um, this is my family here, Dagalingu people too. Um, and we've joined together in 2014, we said no to Maring Jaina Dani. We're here today because from that decision, we were mandated to go on and take the fight up against the state government and against a multi-billion dollar mining company um, to say that our decision making needs to be respected and we're going to determine our own future. And we're here today because the legislation in this country doesn't allow us the opportunity to determine our own future. It says that the only future that you can have is one where you get crumbs off the table from multi-billion dollar companies and state governments are the ones getting the royalties and we're the ones who are always losing out. We're here because we're sick of being the people that always have to sacrifice something for everybody else. We're sick of being the people that are the collateral. We're just pushed aside all the time. We're here because our law and our custom is centered to who we are and it is the most compatible way of living with this land. Everyone has something to learn from us and everything. everyone has something to learn from the way we live with our country. Because we've been here since the beginning of time, the beginning of people in this country. We've observed the land and we've interpreted it into our law. And our law is not of man, our law is of something greater, our law is of the land, something that isn't temporary, something that's permanent and remains unshaken. And we're here trying to defend that because while the law guides us in how to live and how to be with the land and how to live respectfully and to live a good life, a peaceful life, a happy life with sustenance and family and culture and spiritual connection at the core of that, um, we're here because according to this government and the courts and the legislation in this country, those things don't mean anything and they're so willing to disempower us all the time. They're so willing to take away our voice, to drown us out, to erase us and pretend that we don't exist and that we're not here. But so on Friday, the court didn't find in our favour. That's not a surprise because that's what native title is designed to do. It's designed to find in the favour, especially under the Howard amendments, it's designed to find in the favour of reckless multi-billion dollar corporations that want to destroy Aboriginal people and want to destroy Aboriginal land for their own profit. We know that that's the business of native title. We've been working with it for 20 years. And we're here because we're saying our law is first. We, we, we're going through the courts. We are forced to work with the system that doesn't work for us. And we know that. That's why we're here. That's why all of you are here too. Because we know that there is no justice in this country for Aboriginal people. And while the state government might like to try and say that it's a matter between us and Adani. The fact is that at every step of the way, they have interfered. At every step of the way, they've had their people in the room. At every step of the way, they've had people whispering to us in corridors, being like, don't worry, it's not gonna go ahead. Asking us to step down and step away from the fight and to shut up and be quiet. And it's not good enough. And they've been able to back away and we're here because we know that the power lies with the state and the court decision on Friday that found against us, or not in our favour, puts the power right now in the hands of the state government. It's no longer a matter between us and Adani. It's a decision of the state to decide, are they going to side with a company like Adani and just sacrifice us and our country and our connection or are they going to respect us and allow this process to run its course and allow us to have the opportunity to meet with them? In the five years we've been fighting uh, Adani, the state government have not met with us. 
And we're here to say that we want a meeting. We're here to say, we know that the decision lies with you. And if you're going to make a proper decision, you need to be informed. You need to know what, what the risks are. You need to know what is going to be lost here. And it's us. It's, it's, it's us as the people. It's our law, our custom, our culture, our connection to the country. And once that goes away, once they give it to Adani, if they do do this 10-year transfer, that is, a, that is the extinguishment of our native title, it can't be undone. Their, their, their lawyers said that in the court. It cannot be undone. And we're here because we're trying to say, you don't need to do anything right now. You don't need to, an action, the extinguishment would be an act against us. They actually don't need to do anything. That's why we're here, to let them know that the decision lies with them, but they don't need to make it right now because we, uh, we have plans. Um, we're, we're consulting with our council. We intend to take this as far as we need to take it to the High Court. That doesn't mean that we, we expect to find justice because this whole system is set up and designed against Aboriginal people and First Peoples of this country. But we, the fight doesn't stop here. We're going to take it all the way. And if we're going to run with it, we don't need our, our feet tied together. And that's the threat that is here with us now since the court decision on Friday, that we're going to be expected to fight with our hands and feet tied, hands tied behind our back and our feet tied at our ankles. How are we going to do that? And it's up to the state government to decide that they won't interfere and they won't be the ones tying the rope. Thank you very much.